This is a presentation of RBT Entertainment. This isn't about the dead, it's about the living. It's about my mother. It's about my sister. It's about my wife. It's about the 14 years it took me to go from undesirable to un-goddamn deniable. You know, they say all men are created equal, but you look at me and you look at Small Joe, and you can see that statement is not true. Because I'm better than you, and you know it. In the back, there are men and women Seasoned professionals, dues paid in full, gunning to be the best. I'll always light the way, and all you have to do is let me in. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. The cream of the crop. Nobody does it better. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Russellcast, presented by RVT Entertainment on Potomac, Spotify, YouTube, and wherever else you may find this fine audio recording and live on RVT Entertainment's official Twitch.tv channel, where we talk about professional wrestling, both in the mainstream and the independent scene. My name's Matt J. That is TWK. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm TWK of TWK Reviews, here to entertain you for another great 90 minutes of pro wrestling podcasting. As per usual, you know it's funny. As soon as we start the show, uh, Team Four Star drops something called "Sal in a Hell." Must God be night. damn it! They just did. They, they, you know what? I don't even want to do a show more. I, I'm going to watch that video. Goodbye, man. Get Tita. Get, get back here. Too late. It, my, my mouse is already going over the button. up, up, up. You can't drop it's out. Right they over the disconnect you. They I'm won't hear you. Bullshit. They won't hear you disconnect. It's working. The it's, the thing's working. It's not. It's uh, they're not going to hear you disconnect. They're, they're not going to hear the Skype bloop sound. God damn it! Yeah. Now see, that's the thing about streaming mode when being enabled on Discord. It stays silent for all notifications, including dropped calls. Uh, yeah. There goes that running gag. I had it going for so many years. I know, I know, I know. There, 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 there is, there are, adva- there are certain, there. I'll play by the face. No, no, teed up, teed up, teed up. We, we don't go, we don't go with simple planning. Oh no, wait, you're running. You... Ah, fuck it. And I... Holy shit! We'll always love you. I can't believe you did this. <laughs> anyway, we got to kill time because unfortunately, Shin Tiger Girl is running it has run into technical issues. Uh, so he's not around to present Minoru Suzuki in his uh, in his inimitable way. Uh, however, we he said he is working on his on his technical issues. We hope he'll he'll make it. If not, we'll have to wait another week to find out which Minoru Suzuki will be this week. Even then, I'm pretty sure he's thinking up of ways to be Minoru Suzuki when he's not Minoru Suzuki. Long story short, we, uh, we, we he's not here. Technical issues. Uh, I'm assuming he's listening to listen, or trying to listen to this. I hope. But we got uh, we got uh, we got news type stuff and things. We got fa- we got fast lane. In case you're wondering. Um... Okay, JC. So this is a lot. This is he's been doing this on 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 Twitter as well. Look, JC, we're wrestling fans. You don't have to tell us everything. We appreciate you doing what you do, but uh, you know, you don't have to inform us about everything that that happens. We'd appreciate you to, that you don't. That DW you could talk to. Hi. <laughs> Don't be sorry. Don't worry about it. You, you didn't know. It, it's not that. It's not that we don't appreciate it. But sometimes, because we had someone who did that a lot in the past, and it got annoying fast. You know, f- think of it as as the rule of Tokusatsu. If it's news, we know it. You know what I mean? Don't worry too much about it. 
All right, Maddie, what kind of new, what kind of clips do you have set up this week? Well, I'm like, well, sir, this was a tough one because we had the ad, we had uh, the great match, uh, made of a match between uh, Dr. Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa. That could have been something. Mox and Mox and Eddie, they're 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 shooting this shit. I mean, cutting promos. Is there a difference? I ask you. And then there's this clip. Uh, this, like, we know. MJF is a good promo. That that's a, that's a given. I think anyone it, anyone who watches wrestling for as long as we do, yeah, this is assuredly a, 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 a this is not a this is not news. This is old news. This might be his best promo. I'm not gonna say of all time, but it's up there, ladies and gentlemen. We have a name for MJF's new stable, and he he this for context. He had just followed up. Tully Blanchard's uh, Tully Blanchard's opening because he's the manager. He he always opens as one should. We couldn't include the whole segment, but we we it, it, Tully did his job, and of course MJF picked up picked it up from there, and that's where we began our clip of the week. Take a listen. Tully Blanchard was absolutely right. Shocking, I know. He's only the greatest mind in the history of professional wrestling. When he called us the pinnacle because that is exactly what we are. Ladies and gentlemen, look at this lineup. You might not like it, but you gotta look at it. The War Dog, Wardlow. 278 pounds of sheer force and dominance. The best big man in professional wrestling today, Mr. Mayhem himself. And the best insurance policy professional wrestling has to offer. Double S, Sean Spears, the chairman. A wrestler's wrestler, a veteran's veteran. A man who has been held down for far too long, but not anymore. No, 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 not anymore. See? Sean Spears has always been a top guy, and he's going to prove it now, week in and week out. And if you got a problem with that, take it up to him. You're going to eat your words, and then you're going to eat a chair shot. And last but most certainly not least, Cash Money, Dax the Axe, FTR, the only Grand Slam World Tag Team Champions in the history of professional wrestling. The greatest tag team on God's green earth, and they look damn good doing it, baby. And well then, then there's little old me. The guy who's only been on national TV for one year and is already the most talked about name in professional wrestling today. The guy who on this microphone and in this ring is absolutely unstoppable. And the guy who is only 24 years of age. I'm already great now, but baby, I'm like a fine wine. I'm only gonna get better with age. I got 25 plus years left in the tank, and I bet that pisses you off, doesn't it? It makes your blood boil, it makes your legs shake, it makes you want to take your fist and put it right through your TV screen. Because deep down you know that when my career's all said and done, Chris Jericho's not going to be the GOAT. No, 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 no. That spot is reserved for yours truly. We are the pinnacle. We are family. We will be the backbone of AEW for years to come. We will take every premier championship this great sport has to offer. And as the pinnacle, we will take what we want when we want. And right about now, Chris, you know what we want? I think we want your locker room. Oh, and Chris, 
Before I take that and every single thing you hold near and dear to your heart in this world, week after week with me and my boys, allow me to say something to get give you a little heartwarming message here. I hope I can hope I can get it right, guys. It's been six months. I mean, see if I can get it over with. I'm better than you. And you know it! Game link stream in the chat. You can hear the motor in the background. See, I, I, I could hear it. Then something in the background with galloping horses and the hands cramping up and the hand cramping up in the four section there. Also because of the person in the stable's name. Bow down to the, bow down to the Jeff. Bow down to the king. The Jeff is a different thing. Yeah, Jeff is the leader. Maxwell Jacob Freeman. There's no yeah, Jeff in there. Yeah, he's, his name is M. Jeff. You know, we're going to be here all night if we argue about this. Let's just get to the point of, holy crap, this this table may not look like it, but give it a couple of months. This this will be this will be huge. This could be the best period in Sean Spears' entire career. And, and Angry said, so please don't call him the horseman. Why not? Four horsemen, one, the, the, one of the original wrestling factions, and one of the First most off, dominant have, ones in history. I mean, why not? And they have the horsemen with them in Tully Blanchard. They're all wearing suits. They're all screaming horsemen. And the thing about evolution is, they're just another horseman group. That's what it was. That was the inspiration for evolution. What the inspiration of, of evolution was the four horsemen. And that's no more present than the fact they had Ric Flair and the fact that Triple H is a huge NWA mark. He is. I mean, he's more of a Ric Flair mark, but that, that goes with the territory, of course. Well, he's a NWA mark because he also wanted to do war games, but they never let him do it until he got his own promotion. And even then, it's not war games, but, you know, it's, 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 it's still pretty goddamn good, all things considered. He, didn't need the, he did not need the blackjack and hookers for to make his own war games. That's that's evolution a good thing. Was, also, yes, evolution was the horsemen. They wore suits. They weren't. They went in fancy limousines. Their whole gimmick is they got laid a lot. Like, come on, what, what's not horsemen about evolution? And Ric Flair's in it. Woo! Woo! Oh, and they mentioned because everyone will just say, "Oh, there, there, there goes AEW ripping off blank again." Has anyone watched professional wrestling in the last 30 years? Last 50? Woo! What do you call Hulk Hogan? Even he'll tell you he watched Billy superstar Billy Graham. Took some notes from that. Every, nothing under the sun is new. There are a few there there are unique things and there are some new things every once in a while, but deep down, there there's there's inspiration. And, and I don't want to give anti AW marks any more ammo. Look, there's going to be division on this shit no matter what. I'm just going to concentrate on watching the shit and giving you some give you some chuckles every Friday night. Or or, 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 or Sunday, because, you know, we do, do, do a career as well. And I guarantee you, if you were to ask FTR, Sean Spears, M. Jeff, or Wardlow, or Tully Blanchard, like, what's the main inspiration from this group? They would tell you the horsemen. They would tell you straight up horsemen. That's what they would say. Guarantee you. Guarantee you. Good sir. Among other, among other things, of course, there are more influences. I'm sure, but you oh, know, the misfits in action. True. And then anyway, so who's going to take Jericho's place in the blood and guts match? My guess is going to know. Chris Jericho is going to be back. It's going to be Inner Circle versus the Pinnacle. Because I think at this way, point, love- after that beatdown, Inner Circle faces. Yes, and I love the fact that. Not one member, not one single member of Inner Circle is on AEW this week. They're all selling the beatdown. All selling, of them. Then, then again, it's easy to sell to tell them to, to sell the injuries because it's a tape. It was a taped show, but regardless you know of the WWE, opinion, you know, if this is WWE, they'd be back the next week. Yeah, or there would have been a promo, or there would there, there would have been something other than just the promo we got this week and a video explaining what the fuck happened. WWE would find a way to screw the pooch. 
So I'm glad that they're taking their time with this. First week, establish the group. Week two, give them their name. And they even took over the locker room like they said they would. Yeah. And then Pinnacle was smart. Take out the tank, aka Hager, first. Hey, this is gonna be a long. This is gonna be a long-term build. Let's not give it three months and blow it off like W. Oh, no, WWE would do it in three weeks. To be fair, but this is long-term build, and I get the feeling that they're gonna do blood and guts. They're gonna do it in, inside of a building outside of Daly's place. Speaking of long-term, Matty J. According to Dave Meltzer, guess when they started the build. According to Dave Meltzer. When they decided this is the direction we want to go. Guess when? Ooh, I want to say that Dynamite where they started gambling, like MJF and FTR started gambling. You're close. Because that's uh, because where the kayfabe idea the came, came about. That was, uh, it was brought started, by Excalibur this week or on Wednesday. They, they started the build the moment they signed FTR. <laughs> that's when they made the decision. To build, to that build this long. That's that's year. That's a year plus. The moment the FTR came into AEW, that's when they all decide. Okay, we want to build this faction. That is when they decided to build the Pinnacle. Damn. And MD Commissioner Blood and Guts War Games has said, no, no, no. Remove the cinematic edition part of that question. It's Blood and Guts. It's it's their version of War. It's the legally distinct version. Of war games because WWE doesn't want to give up that shit. As Mojo would say, the best kind of distinct. Yes. August 2020, approximately? No, this is what, July, uh, May, maybe? Uh, well, it all depends on when they have crowds back. So I would say probably around. No, no, no. Guts, August 2020, approximately, as, as FTR's debut. Uh, FTR's debut, uh, yeah, probably May. Yeah, I think it was May. Yeah, definitely May. And, they, and it's amazing. Just they, did, they It doesn't feel like they've been around that long, but they have. Yeah, they time started in mid-2019. Time flew by. Also, uh, Shit. this past week was the one-year anniversary of the debut of Matt Hardy and Mr. Brody Lee in AEW. Mm-hmm. And this God week was the know, first pandemic dynamite. First yeah, pandemic this, wrestling, anything really. Yeah, it was supposed to be held in Rochester, New York, mm-hmm. where I'm certain Brody would have gotten a hero's welcome from the crowd. He would have gotten the pop of his life. It's a shame that he never got to wrestle in that big of an audience because <sighs> he at the time he, the heat, the heat would have been something to hear. Yeah, because the most the most fans he got to wrestle in front of, unfortunately, was like three or four hundred, I think. Again, uh, no no fault of anybody. It's literally just timing. It's, just a shame. it's timing, and that. WWE needs to go to hell for that fucking timing. Yeah, just uh, goddamn. Just oh, and we will get we will roast the shit out of the Fed multiple times tonight. You goddamn know it. I have a few notes here about them. But oh yeah, first... let's get to the notes. Let's get to the news. We may as well. The first, the first note I have here is Pent. Ogon, everyone's favorite Irish wrestler. <laughs> Folks, he wears a hat, he becomes a meme. He had a hell of a match against Cody Rhodes, though. He did. Uh, they had he, some great stuff going. Uh, Penta worked over Cody's arm for the majority of it, mm-hmm. and even ended it with by going, Cero Miedo! Snip. That classic move on the ground arm break. Yep. There's the Penta we know and love. Oh, he got pinned. Fuck. Yeah, he, he took a few moments to posture afterwards. After he broke down, he's like, yeah, yeah. Then Cody's like, I see an opening. Yoink. Yup. That's pretty much what happened. And Penta's like, you motherfucker. And so he decided to beat the shit out of him more and more and more until the Nightmare Factory came out to save him. Sans one person. Maddie, who was missing coming out to save him? Who was the missing person? Is it Chef? Officer no. Brady or the 1994 Denver Broncos? No, it's fucking QT Marshall. Really, uh, turning heel recently. He's they're slow burning the obvious here, but why the fuck not? The company is slow burn, so yeah, mm-hmm. why not? Uh, looks like they'll be turning him heel, and I wonder what 
will come of this? Is he going to form his own tag team? Because he's been coming out with Nick Camarado recently, so I'm wondering if those two are going to form their own tag team. And yeah, Nick, I do agree. You know, Sammy's vlogs have done a great job of building Fuego del Sol. BTE, Fuego del Sol. They're, they, they, were, BTE, Sammy's vlogs. Shit to catch, folks. Also, I might have to start watching Ethan's vlogs now that he's in AEW. Oh, yeah. There's going to be a huge, huge vlogiverse in AEW now. And on top of that, John Silvers has his own YouTube channel where he has wrestlers recreate movie scenes. <laughs> and it's all had if you're an old school youtube viewer like i am because how you doing brandon hardesty but still so cool why for something not? new it's still at least something to you know get the wrestlers to stretch their acting skills and i well, gotta say there's I, time to I'll kill when you when you're in there and you can't leave until until shit's done i gotta say ali one hell of an actor yeah and john silver and turns out the Dark Water members can sing a decent tune <laughs> during their recreation of that famous Anchorman scene. I mean, why not? <laughs> like, it really showed, like, I really love, like, all these vlogs and stuff, just being able to give you an extra showcase of how charismatic some of these people can be and just how uh, malleable they can be as well and adaptive their personalities are to where they can portray these different characters. Before we get to the meat and potatoes of uh, of the rest of AEW Dynamite guts, I, I just remembered the the uh, the message he sent us. He was wondering about the uh, Ring of Honor lawsuits. Oh yeah, that. Um, so uh, last time I checked, uh, both Killer Kelly and Joy Mercury are suing Ring of Honor mm -hmm. due to their poor treatment of basically really, 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 really bad treatment. Apparently, of uh, being able to keep a safe work environment with uh killer kelly uh apparently taking forever until medical personnel would see her after she was apparently unconscious for a bit okay yeah like i forget the specifics of it but like you can find all of it on like there are like dirty pages that have all the details put out there and there's a lot to this stuff like there's a lot to go through if you want to skim if you want to look through it yourself but there's a lot to it and it's not making Ring of Honor look very good right now if even half of it is true. Half. If even half of it's true, they're fucked. They are fucked, fucked, fucked. They were just about to be on the come up, especially in the last couple of, uh, couple of months. Shit's been good. And then the behind-the-scenes bullshit reared its ugly head again. Yeah, it turns out to uh, Ring of Honor, yeah, not to uh, management, it's not doing too good behind the scenes. It seems real ugh. It's like, reading, I just remember reading that thing, just going, oh my god, what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh my fuck! Bad. It's bad. It's just, bad. Yeah, I, I highly recommend everyone reading yourself, so that way you can have similar reactions. Maybe, I don't know. Look, I That's read it, and I'm like, you the same reaction. reaction. Pretty much. Again, this is all legal dealings, and Ring of Honor is uh, is probably their end up. Uh, who, who owns them? Sinclair owns them. Sinclair Sinclair Broadcasting. They're going to spend a couple a couple million bucks defending that shit, but ooh, that is going to be a dent on Ring of Honor. And they and the last thing they need is a dent. Yeah, they, they've had a, a a few of those these past five past few years. Just like, a few. They they just. Just started bringing being on the come up, especially with the pure tournament a couple months ago, and now this. It's like, oh god, can we not have like one fuck up with Ring of Honor? It used to be cool, like everything yeah. went downhill the minute the bullet the, the elite left. Yeah, it's like the elite leaves, and then it's all downhill from here. Hear yeah, that, or maybe the elite saw what's happening backstage, and they're like. Um, we're we're gonna form our own company, okay? Ooh, bye. See, see, we're, we're gonna do our own thing over here. Bye. Also, you wanna know a funny story? Yep. Ring of Honor helped uh, flip the bill for, I believe, helped flip some of the bill for all in. So yeah, they 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 they, 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 they were. I think a lot of the television facilities, the television, the camera, all that stuff. That was Ring of Honor. The stage so they they definitely up, got some Ring of Honor stuff on it. So they end up helping create their own competition, in a way. 
Who knew? They didn't know. No one knew at the time. It was literally the Bucks and Cody taking on a bet from Dave Meltzer going all in with a with a, like an indie show that could fill out 10,000 seats. And it did. And Ring of Honor owns the rights to all in. Wow. So Enigma. that explains why they had to, you know, use a different name for the September show. I was wondering about that it, for a while. It makes sense. They wanted to they, they keep everything in house and Ring of Honor, you know, that, that gets a lot of the rub because a lot of the stuff was Ring of They were a Ring of Honor talent at the time. Makes sense. It would not surprise me to hear. We have, uh, maybe news. not. Um, it would not surprise me somewhere down the line reading someone buying Ring of Honor. I'm not going to say who because I'm not going to speculate that far. But it would not surprise me that. I could use another tape library on the peacock. No. Oh. God, is that a trans? Is, is that a, is, are are you trying to do a transition? A, a, a no, segue we'll on that, that one. We will get to that soon enough. You, you could have used that as a segue right there. I'm not going to tell it. Not going to lie. We could have, but I want to stay on topic with AEW at the moment. Fair enough. So fair, fair is enough. Week, fair is enough. <laughs> so next week we're getting Darby Allen versus not negative one as much as he would have wanted it. Apparently. Oh, he wanted it too. He fucking wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, negative one, ready to fight everybody, it seems. He, he would. <laughs> By the way, I gotta say, his interactions uh, last Monday with uh, with Ty Conti, adorable. Oh. There's people, I was in a Discord call with the, uh, some of the NGTGWF, and people were bitching, oh, you're, you're, you're abusing him, you're doing this. No, you're not, he's having fun. If they were abusing him, the woman would have sued them by now. The mother would have said, fuck you, see you in court. Yeah, like, AEW at this point is like, his aunts and uncles, uh, pretty much taking care of their nephew. At this point, it's 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 him, or, or it's either that or him crying over over his dad dying. Do you want you want you want tears? Yeah, just it really is just whole good wholesome fun seeing negative one interact with. All He's the not in storyline, or if it's there is any storyline, it's light on his end. He's wearing a mask. Going... He's obviously having fun out there. Let the kid have some fun. They're not going full Eddie Guerrero with this. Yeah. And I'm very glad that they're not because... They shouldn't. Uh, we, they yeah, shouldn't. We, we've seen we've seen wrestling promotions exploit death uh, a bit too many times, really. So it's nice to see some respect shown for those that passed for once. And speaking of which, that's why Darby Allen put forth his challenge to Dark Order. He says, as a tribute to Brody Lee... I want to defend this title against a member of the Dark Order. And so they chose the Dark Order members had a meeting and they chose John Silver. John Silver versus, versus Darby. John Silver versus Darby Allen. If I could talk, sign me up on that one. And then Darby Allen, also, Darby Allen also said that he only defended the title three times since November. If this were WWE, that would be very good defense record. But he says, no, nah, that's bullshit. I want to defend this literally every single week. He wants to be the most fightingest champion ever, which is basically what a mid-card title should be. It yeah. should be defended more often than the others because the whole point of really creating a mid-card title is so that way the world title doesn't have to be defended so much. You can save the world title for special occasions, whereas the mid-card title gets defended more often. So that way you can still promote title matches without having to be the world title. So uh, I believe that he'll defeat Silver next week and then go on to defend against a man who's been interrupting Sting these past couple weeks, Mr. Lance Archer. Which makes sense. And, he, and Archer still wants a piece of... Uh, still wants a piece of... Am I coming in loud? No, I, I check one, two. Oh, here we go. So never mind. Uh, no, but uh, no, he's been uh, he's been challenged. He wants a piece of Sting as well. He's been interrupting Sting's promos. Cage comes out. I, I believe that's part of your notes as well. Yep, uh, Cage yep, and Cage. Taz comes out. Taz does his shit and then takes the mic from Taz. Gives uh, gives Sting his props, and of course Taz is going, "What the fuck are you doing? You're not supposed to give them compliments. They're the good guys. We're the bad guys. We're supposed to tell them to go fuck themselves and drop them on the heads. What are you doing?" Get back here! Get back, you stuck, my bitch! I'll suplex you too! You look at a broken fucking neck! <laughs> uh, what's the deal with Brian Cage? Shrug. <laughs> That's all. Face turn. Now. And I gotta say, Face uh, turn, probably, maybe. 
I saw him uh, as a baby face in both Lucha Underground and Impact Wrestling, and I gotta say, he can be a pretty good baby face as long as he doesn't have to cut too many promos. Yeah, this is there. one of those shut up and fight kind of guys. And he's athletic. He's good at least posturing to the crowd. He's good at just much like Batista having very, very good physical charisma. That also, and he can of, fly. Yes. Speaking of breakups, it looks like Miro and Kip are teasing one as Miro wants nothing to do with the best friends because he's like, we had our pair of you match. It was good. Now I'm moving on. But Kip's like, no, I'm so angry at them. I want to fight them forever. And Miro's like, no, let's not. And he walks away and Kip's like, he tells Alex Marvis, yeah, of course we accept. We're doing the match. They're all so, going to die a lot. Now, yeah, I, can, yeah. I, actually, I, I actually could book this tag match. Miro shows up, beats the crap out of everybody, and just to fuck with Kip, puts puts Charles on Kip. One, two, three, best friends win. That could happen. Although, one thing that could also happen is uh, best friends end up winning by pinning Kip. Kip looks super sad and apologetic, and Miro just stares a hole at him. Looks like he's going to accept his apology, and then throws him through the arcade screen. That's one way to do it. And of course, in our main event of the evening, Britt Baker, Thunder Rosa, lights out! Can we can we talk about Scorpio Sky's heel promo real quick? All right, go ahead, I'm pretty Mr. Sure, Matty I'm J. Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure we, we skipped that. Whoopsie! Yeah, that was a good promo. That it was. Good to always see some good promo stuff from Scorpio Sky, who's been an absolute veteran of the independent scene for the past several years, and it's good to see him finally get some good heel work go going, because it's just so damn good. I've seen him do good heel stuff on the indies, so now he's getting to do it in front of a mainstream audience that's fantastic, and it could elevate him, and I could see him, if not Lance Archer, I could see him eventually beating Darby Allen for the TNT title, having himself get a good run with it. There you go. Now we get to the now we get to the good shit. Oh boy. Al fuck. There was blood. I was happy. Plus thumbtacks. Plus tables. Britt Baker's a star. 100%. She has those, those the faces she gave us when she's picking up stuff, the face where she had when she opened up that bag of, of soon-to-be thumbtacks in a ring, she took a flat back bump on those uh, on on those on those tacks. Bare backed, by the way. Like there was there, there there was no shirt blocking it. It was just her regular gear. Yeah, it just very, very surprising that they would wear their regular regular wrestling gear, especially Brett Baker when she knows she's gonna be falling into thumbtacks. That's just ooh. ooh. Ow. Owie. I've only ever stepped on one thumbtack in my entire life. That hurt. So I can't imagine having dozens go into my back. Also, props to Rebel, not Reba, taking a table bump. She took, yeah, she took a beautiful table bump, all things considered. And I believe it was one of the members of the gun club that captured it on video and played it in slow motion. Mm-hmm. Like, props to the gun club for constantly taking amazing video shots during the show. Can we give them props for that? Because they're always doing good stuff with that. Basically, the unofficial fan cam of AEW. Pretty much. If not them, it's Brandon Cutler. It's usually <laughs> one of those two doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. Moving on over to Nashville, we have a new X Division champion. His name is Ace Austin. Yeah, they had a pay per view last week. Yeah, they they did indeed they did indeed they did. Unfortunately, I missed that, but I did catch the results. Yeah, we also have new Impact World Tag Team Champions, New Japan Pro Wrestling Zone, Finn Juice. How much of a shocker was that, by the way? Yeah, I mean. A New Japan Tag Team is now Impact World Tag Team Champions. Something I would not thought could be possible. Well, let's put again, it this way. 
You know, the last before all this happened, the pandemic and all that stuff. You know, the last time they did that, that uh, uh, Impact, then TNA had a relationship with New Japan. You know how long that was? What was his uh, New Japan name? Okado? Yeah. Samoa Joe was still in the company, essentially. Yeah. They fucked, they almost fucked up Okada, though he does thank them for, you know, making them understand, hey, I could, I could do a character. And also, you know that Okada was a nobody, basically a young boy in New Japan at the time. Yeah. This was his excur ex excursion, essentially. Yeah. So it wasn't like they took this main eventer and made him into a joke, which seems to be the narrative that some people have. Like he was like this is just him figuring stuff out now. It wasn't a good gimmick. It Ooh, wasn't good but it he was figured, hey, he, he but he figured out how to do the gimmick. Yeah. But I do think that should be that some nuance is important because this wasn't main event Okada going from world champion to jobber in the States. No. Like some people seem to incorrectly believe that this was. This is a this is impact getting this town from uh New Japan and being told Okay, give them some experience. And they're like, oh, we got some experience for you. Have you ever seen Green Hornet? No? Well, here's your gimmick. And New Japan broke and they were pissed off. Now, obviously, the nuances are, are, are deeper than just, oh, they fuck, They almost fucked up Okada, although they didn't. But, you know, that's the general thing about it. But it's, it's been that long is what we're trying to say here. Yeah, it's been a very long time. But like, uh oh, good. AJ Styles was still there. And with short hair. Yeah, I remember when AJ Styles didn't have soccer mom hair. Didn't remember have those? soccer mom hair, didn't have a beard. Yeah, Just she was straight up shaded. phenomenal AJ Styles, DNA, original. The, yeah, back when he was the phenomenal twink. Short hair and all, folks. And we also have a new Unified Impact World Champion. They call me Bushmaster Rich Swan. We need Shin Tiger Curl to do that, that Bushmaster gimmick. But yeah, this. So oh yeah, it's official. Rich Swan, Kenny Omega. Sorry, Rich. You got a month left as world champ. Also, I should note, one thing I forgot the AEW segment. All those people losing their ever-loving minds that Christian Cage picked up the AEW World title thinking, oh, he's going to get an instant title shot. He did a promo this week on AEW television. Didn't going, I just play the goddamn clip from, from his podcast with Edge a couple of years ago last week? You did, but there are still people losing their minds the moment that Christian Cage... He's not, he's not on. interested in the belt. He wants a match with Omega. They're just he's slow got, billing this shit until double or nothing. So, I have to explain this. He cut promo saying he wants the world title shot, but he knows that in AEW, you have to earn the shot. He has to win matches. This isn't going to be an instant thing. He's going to have to climb the ranks like everyone else. Just like I and said, he the, the, they, they did notice the pattern where some, certain world championship, uh, champion contenders, you know, Brody Lee, couple couple of matches on Dark, couple of wins on, on Dynamite, and then title contender, Brian Cage, same thing. Christian Cage, it's going to be the same thing. Folks, uh, I don't detect any fault with this. Anyone with a winning uh, with a good win streak gets a top five sp spot in the in the rankings. Or am I missing the point of their sports like system? You know, if you go on a good streak, and eventually you will climb the rankings, and eventually Christian will. I think that he's either going to either challenge for the title at double or nothing or all out. Either or, either or. I would I would say double or nothing because they do have a couple months until then. That's what uh, double or nothing. That would be May. Yeah, it's usually at the middle or end of May. That would that would be the soonest for sure. All that would be the latest that would do it, especially with, with the the iron being as hot as it is. But Christian all, wants to wrestle, and he yep, wants to and wrestle Kenny Omega because he's got ideas that oh I could do this, I could do that, I could. He gets to do that now. What's the fucking problem with that? Dude Dude, dude wants to wrestle people. Maybe give them a rub. Crazy, I know, but still. I really do think people forget just how good he is. It, it, to be fair, it's been a while since we've seen Christian in the ring. Fair point, but still. 
people are going to learn uh, pretty quickly that as long as he's still got it, he is going to put on one hell of a show. Yeah. Uh, next here. NXT needs to get off Wednesday nights, and I have the numbers to back oh, it up. Oh, the I saw the tweet from Brian Alvarez and the more detailed tweet from John Pollock. They are getting murdered. All right, so oh let me my just read God. This. Let me just read this in full. Oh. Thunder Rosa versus Britt Baker, June 795,000 fans in the final quarter hour. Only Lorcan and Danny Birch versus Finn Bauer and Karrion Cross. That should drew, be a huge. It drew 523,000 viewers, which is to be, which is believed to be the lowest quarter hour number ever for an NXT main event match. However, it had one of the best overrun gains during the viewership, up to 787,000 viewers once Dynamite went off the air. So, just by layman's terms, when Dynamite went off the air, their ratings went up, 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 up. Move to Tuesday. Put your talents over. Everybody wins. And this is Gary and Cross versus Finn Balor. This is the champion. Ver this is essentially in UFC they would call Finn Balor the interim champion. And here, you know, here comes a guy who didn't lose lose the belt. This is a mega match. And they're and they're, and they're, they're they're basically Stone Cold and and Rock doing this the doing the thing where it's like opposite thing and strange bedfellows whatever, and they're facing some two dudes, and Walter shows up too. Somewhere in the mid card. I was really hoping that when Walter and shows he's up, facing like, Champa takeover, and you're when Walter. Go ahead. I was going to say, when, when I heard that Walter showed up, I was like, hey, oh, they're finally doing Walter versus Finn Balor at TakeOver? No. But no, he's just better. Having a big... Walter eh? versus Tommaso Ciampa. Eh? Is it for the UK title? I would assume it is because he's still the UK champ. I would assume so. I mean, if it's not, it should be. It doesn't interest me as much. Hmm. I was really hoping to see, because that was the match that they were promising over a year ago. Finn Balor versus Daniel Bryan. It's not going to happen again. But stop with the fantasy booking. Although I would like yeah. to see that, but it, it, it's literally WrestleMania week. By then, we'd be talking about maybe Karrion Cross versus Daniel Bryan if you do that. Because I'm pretty sure they want to put the belt back on uh, on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on Karrion Cross here, but that's another story there. Renico in there, the story is stranger, he says. Explain. I, 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 I would very much like an explanation, please. Mer? And then my extreme, uh, he says, I'm doing better on booking that mania that Vince is. Just, sure. <laughs> Dude, not, not a my hard mother to cross. could book WrestleMania better. Yeah. My grandmother, both my grandmothers who have died, God rest their souls, they could back book a, they've never watched wrestling, they could probably book WrestleMania better. Well, speaking of WrestleMania weekend, yeah, we gotta talk he's about that. Back huh? And he's in the hall. Easy. E. Uh, this was announced on after bell after the bell with Corey Graves and some guy named Vic. And uh they 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 did a thing, they kissed his ass, and it said, by the way, you're gonna be in the Hall of Fame, and Eric Bishop went, Whoa. Yes, AEW Zone Eric B is going into the WWE Hall of Fame. Now, before people start thinking, oh, it's the thing in the Actually, he doesn't have a contract with anybody. He's just a podcast. He just does his podcast with Conrad Thompson. That's as close to the, to AW as he gets, really. But still, yeah, it's it's earned. I mean, this guy is a huge name in pro wrestling. He's the guy who took it to Vince better than anyone else ever did. All right. So Renico says Imperium wanted Thatcher, Champa, and they and they said nope. Thatcher does goes Mia. Goes Mia Wolf. What will Mia do? Uh, goes okay. Thatcher goes MIA. Wolf goes MIA due to Champa. Then Champa goes back to Kip Bedpirian's ass, and then Walter shows up. Okay, that makes sense. All right, I then. think. 
anyway but uh so yeah so do we need to explain wcw in the mid 90s to you folks well some people yes because believe it or not not everyone is as diligent at doing their research into the wrestling history as us so flows a direct enough. quote from eric bischoff i wcw nitro beat monday night raw 83 weeks in a row something nobody's been able to do before or since oh and he, he's he's a, he's a create he's the creative genius behind the formation of the new world order he made bill goldberg a thing for better or worse now of course but still wcw goldberg legit he was a star bishop did was. that and just from a from a behind the scenes business standpoint wcw when he became like the head honcho they were losing money they lost money and they but before that Bischoff made WCW, Trent Turner's WCW, and made money with it. Yeah, the end up like people forget, but during like the first one or two years, NWO was printing money out of its ass. Hell, when Bischoff started, they were just making a pro barely making profit. And then you add the NWO to it. Uh holy shit. You know that gif of Nick Jackson shooting money out of a gun? That was our, that was the NWO. It, it's easy to forget just how red hot the NWO and just pro wrestling was at the time because it was literally everywhere. It was everywhere. It was pop. Pro wrestling was quite literally pop culture for that few years. Folks, this is not hyperbole. NWO doesn't get created. DX doesn't get created, or if it their, their DX doesn't get it, they, they doesn't get to do the things that they would do. WCW doesn't get NWO doesn't get created. Oh, maybe Bret Hart might be, might have a might have had a better run, but hey, Bischoff. Yeah, I, I've got I'm getting my stories crossed here, but uh, WCW get, doesn't Nitro doesn't get created. The screw job doesn't happen and doesn't that get the creation of we don't get the creation of Mr. McMahon, which is the crucial antagonist to Stone Cold Steve Austin. You might have heard of the man. Oh, he would have uh, been a big deal, but Bret Hart doesn't get screwed because WCW throws people's championships in garbage. Look, I'm shrugging, folks. Just saying. WWE Network on Peacock. Oh, speaking of, there's your segue. Good. Oh, I've been hearing oh, nothing but bad things about this. Oh, 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 Vince, 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 Junior. Oh, 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 oh. The the thing I read, I'm like, oh, this is gonna go downhill fast, isn't it? People are saying. Okay, so the functionality of Peacock is of the network is practically gone. You can't search by match anymore. It's just pay-per-views only. And um, I feel bad for you fuckers. I feel for, I feel bad for you and anyone who has a network in the states now because. Uh, I mean, oh my god! I, the list. Go ahead. You have a better, more detailed list, but uh, I don't have a list. Christ. But I can tell you that. On launch day, it took them a while to get all to get any amount of pay per views. There were WrestleManias missing. There were Royal Rumbles missing. There's just a lot missing. Uh, Raw only went back to 2008 as far as those oh, shows go. Oh, no, oh, wow. There's, there was a lot, just a lot of that. Uh, the interface is also hard to navigate. It's just uh, Justin Henry uh, reported as being like the creator of a Wawa parking lot was the person chosen to create the interface for the WWE Network on Peacock. Okay, I don't know what I, okay, I'm Canadian. I've seen a Wawa in Florida. I, I'm pretty sure it's not the same as it would be in, 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 in the home states, I would assume, but uh, ouch. It's, it's not great. It's not, ow. It's not yeah, the network has not gone off to a good start here on Peacock. Uh, just rushing things a bit because they want to make sure that it's 
functional before Mania. They're they're basically doing Peacock so they can go live on Mania and say we're on Peacock now. Yep. At this point, you are paying four ninety nine or nine ninety nine, or your cable bill to com your cable bill to, to Comcast to watch free pay per views now. That's it. The back is oh, so okay. fuck you. That's also, basically what I'm reading. If this is successful in any way, shape, or form financially, then I wouldn't be surprised if they start doing this sort of thing with other countries as well. Just getting rid of the network and just putting it onto other subscription services. See, that I can only say in Canada, what subscription service? We got fucking nothing. Yeah, like if they do like a Peacock thing with other countries. You can't like, do a uh, Peacock thing. We don't have Peacock up here for one thing. We don't even have an equivalent. Most of the no, of the stuff is, is, is CTV and Global and their shit is free and barely working. Well, I'm talking about is the one thing that Cole talked brought up is like in England, they could do Sky, a deal with a Sky. They could do Sky. Sky. They could probably do a deal with Sky Sports and I could feel England going, oh, fuck off. You could do that, like I said, with other countries. They could end up selling this to different subscription services overseas to like whomever wants to buy it. If they see that, if this ends up being financially uh, profitable. So this is a preview for things to come, ladies and gentlemen. We're fucked. Enjoy that network while you still can, while it's good, functioning. You can use it to search for specific wrestlers. Like, if I want to find matches with the Great Muda, all I have to do is go into the search bar, type in the Great Muda. His, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. His profile comes up along with a whole bunch of matches. And I can just select the different matches from there. And I can go on just... I'll having a good old marathon of a day of watching Great Muda matches. Not going to be able to do that with Peacock. I'm going to repeat this one more time. They're fucked. You're fucked. WWE Network is fucked. Peacock is fucked. You know, but we're, we're, all the fucked. we're all fucked. Yeah, there you go. Time for some good news. Guess who's returning to the world of professional wrestling? Smiling Guyly Ray. Yes, Saturday, June fifth, Warrior Wrestling. You know what? She. It, it looks to me like she's going to be taking it slow. So, all right, fair enough. I am super happy about this. I'm happy. Bobbert's happy. We're all happy. Smiling Kylie Ray is back, baby. Good. If, even, even if it's just for one night only, I am happy for it to be even just one night. Her positivity is that strong. I, I'm smiling because just just the best of news. And yeah. now we get to the worst of news. Jim Cornette, go fuck yourself. You and your whole fan base can all go fuck themselves. No. Fuck get the fuck out of he here. Missed, you, you can explain what the fuck he did, but I could tell you he missed another opportunity to shut the fuck up, you idiot. So, shut up. Yeah, uh, so Jim Cornette and his Colts Boyd Makiito off of Twitter today. Hooray! What? Yeah. They repeat that for me, please. Repeat that. Jim Cornette and his mob bullied Makiito off of Twitter today. I forgot the right Jane. Thank you. Did we you know what, Shin? I don't know if you're gonna make it or not, but I'm gonna make a D cell for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I have a feeling this would no doubt get a DSL battery award. Because he deserves a few deep cells to the back of the head. Because Jim Cornette does he simply is doesn't so far up his own ass that he doesn't get it. And he's also racist towards Japanese women. Because in his own mind, Japanese women are only getting over because of a fetish for Asians. That's it. That's the only reason, according to the mind of Cornette. Of all the fucking weeks, Cornette. Like, I'm not, you know, we're not going to bring, we don't like to bring outside stuff into our show because we, we, we are, you know, mostly we are, try, we, we try to be positive or at the very least funny enough that you can forget about real life for about a couple of minutes. But fuck's sake. I'm. Does the, does the, does the, does the hashtag stop Asian hate mean anything? Probably not to him. Probably not. 
He's going to think it's all right. You know what? If, if, if he could, I wish he could just fuck off that I I have to call him a fellow podcaster makes me sick. Yeah, because he uses this fucker. This fucker gets paid to do his fucking show, and we've been doing this. I've been doing this for 10 plus years. You've been doing it for, for seven of those 10, and we're barely making pennies. And we are Explain more- the justice in that bullshit. Yeah, we're infinitely more wholesome than he is, and we're not here trying to spread any you know, We're of- infinitely more wholesome, and we're not wholesome at all. That's how bad it is. You know, at least we're not trying to spread vile. We're not trying to spread bigotry, you know? We're not going like, oh, this person's only popular because Folks. of their ethnicity, clearly. Like, no, that's stupid. That's Do not realize how fucking stupid that sounds, Cornette. Look. What the fuck? My job is to make is to make is to riff and review the stuff I see on screen. I've said it before with Ron Rousey. Yeah, she's trans. She's transphobe. All that stuff. T Dub has the right to not say anything about uh, Ron Rousey, and I respect it. But I see. I look at Ron Rousey as a wrestler and what I see on screen. What she does behind behind the scenes, I don't give a fuck usually. But James E. Cornette running off Makito on Twitter because he can't take the fact that he that. Women wrestling, women do good wrestling things. Fuck's sake, he's doing this for attention. Let's also not forget that when Candice LeRae was on the independent scene, wrestling men and beating them, he was losing his mind over that as well, thinking that that was killing the business. And yet, one of the teams that she beat was the Unbucks. Where are they now? Oh, they're only multi-millionaires and EVPs of their own wrestling promotion. That is currently beating WWE's, you know, Wednesday night show. You know, no big deal. And J- and Jim Cornette, who decided to kill the business. Oh, he's killing the business. Oh, kayfabe's dead. Kayfabe's dead. You did so many shoot videos yourself. No, he is not an old school man. He's just an old man and a whore at that. Yes, because all the shit and his and his group. All he's all he's doing, no, no, that's ironic. He says he's killing the business. I thought that's good. That's ironic because you're doing it yourself, asshole. Fuck's sake, man! All right, moving on to positive stuff. Hey, Maddie. Yeah. Yeah. Retro Mania Wrestling will be out on Xbox and Switch by this time next week. It seems. Hopefully, hopefully. We're, there's we're no there's no concrete can. date. They're oh, they're opening up a concrete date concrete date by the end of the weekend. Hopefully, I'm saying you know, uh, they said that by this upcoming Tuesday, it should be on Xbox, and then later on for Switch. So by this time next week, it'll be on Xbox and Switch, and then later on for Sony as well. So it looks like those games are coming to console really really soon within the next week and a half. We'll be playing Retro Mania Wrestling. I can't wait. I'm guts, I've been uh, guts this on the corny. So I didn't mean to bring it up. I don't know if I would feel bad if for corny if cancel culture got a hold of them. I don't think he's aware that it, it got a hold of him already, or it's just he's uh, uh, ignorant and unaware of the bullshit that he's facing. Either way, if the mob gets him, I'm uh, I'm on my way over here. Minding my own business. There's a reason why, you know, so many people in wrestling these days are saying that they'll be celebrating. It's weird. People are reacting to Jim Cornette now the way Jim Cornette Cornette reacted to Vince Russo. Yeah. And I guarantee you the irony is lost on him wholeheartedly. It is. Because here's the thing. Five years ago? I'm not not to say I'm a big I was a big James Jim Cornette fan, but some of his opinions do and did ring true. Hey, a broke he's had solid opinions on wrestling. The problem is whenever something try, someone tries to do something out of uh, that that colors outside the lines, he's always had that opinion over there. This is flippy bullshit, or this is this. Wrestling has gone to that for years. Some people, have, some people like Ricochet, Ricochet and Will Ospreay, have found a way to innovate it and make it look like it's you know, yes, it's acrobatic, it's it's over flippy, it's overused, and all that stuff. But and 
We don't let's care. Let's also not forget. It's what people come. want now. And let's also not forget, when it comes to singing and dancing, that's been around for decades as well. And you'll remember the fabulous Freebirds who sang and danced their way to the WCW ring? Anyone remember that? Yeah, they sang the, the, the Bad Street USA. You it, know, They sang it live. They, and they danced a, the sang it, it live. B, they done it in, w, in World Class Championship Wrestling in WCW. We've had this this corny shit for decades, and he's still bitching about it. He he lost the war, and he won't. Ref this is a guy who lost the war and refu and just uh, and just refuses to just let it go. He's also someone who cannot keep a job in a promotion to save his life. He, he's and he's one of us. He's one of the smart ones. He's one, he's supposed to be one of the good ones, and he won't let go of this this mentality of of wrestling as a sport. Hey. Every there, wrestling is so multi. Um, I'm not gonna say multicultural, multi dimensional. Oh. Thank you. It's so multi dimensional now that at this point, if you want a sport, you could watch New Japan, and most of it's gonna be good. All Japan's another good example. Noah's a good example. Uh, the NWA they want to bring, they want to bring back a little bit of that old school feel, and they were kind of successful with power last year. Uh, that last late 2019. Oh wait, we do have a main event for their upcoming pay review for NWA. Nick Aldis will be defending the NWA World Title as a tribute to the question mark, aka Josephus. Mm -hmm. He'll be defending it against Aaron Stevens. Makes sense. And honestly, I could see Aaron Stevens getting a good few months run with it because Nick Aldis has had that world title for over two years. So I don't think it would hurt him at all if he, you know, if Aaron Stevens had a little run with it. You know, even if it's just a few months as a tribute. All this is a heel. He'll get it back. He'll get some heat back on from it. And would it be fun if he, if, uh, if, uh, if, if, uh, Aaron, uh, if Steve's, if Stevens won with a Mongrovian karate move. Yes. The karate. Thank you. <laughs> I love doing this bit. I'm going to, I, we can't do it all the time, but every once in a while, just doing that. I, I think that, that'd be. <laughs> <laughs> For those wondering, he's uh, he's uh, speaking a Mongrovian and he's repeating the Steiner math promo. Uh, sacrifice. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> a lot shorter syllables, though. It's not as uh, not as catchy as Steiner's version, obviously. But it's in Mongrovian. Do not ask okay. me why. I, how I know Mongrovian? Uh, I'm not allowed to tell you. The point is, there's wrestling <laughs> out there for everyone. Yeah. And if you for embrace that, the business will grow. One of the things that I loved about discovering Tokyo Joshi Pro was how diverse their characters are. There's a character who is Japanese, but she only speaks French because her character is from France, even though she's not. She just pretends she is because she's all about she's fashion. She's basically a French version of, of, of Jean-Paul Levesque in WCW. You can actually speak French. Yeah. Unlike Jean-Paul Levesque, who was like, you, oui, I am this Jean-Paul Levesque. Check out my accent. <laughs> and even Triple H is, uh, is nowadays would be like, yeah, yeah WCW I'm... might have made a profit every once in a while, but it still is corny as shit. <laughs> yeah. Triple H, you know, I remember him being interviewed about that going like, yeah, that, that was that was bad. My accent sucked. That was terrible. He was happy to, to switch to a full English accent in his uh, WWF debut. Let's put it that way. Yeah, that, that, that suited him better because, you know, his, like I said, his French accent, despite his last name, mm, not so good. Not so good. Yeah, that's what it is. That being said, fuck you, Jim um, Cornette. Let's move on to good last, stuff. I do have one last thing here, and that is to help out indie wrestler Lance Lude because uh, a few weeks, uh, about a month ago, he was diagnosed with cancer. Mm. And his brother set up a GoFundMe, which is currently doing pretty well. Nice, good, good. That's, that that is some good news. At, yep, currently sitting at four thousand two hundred ninety-five dollars. The thumb is up on that one. Yep. If anyone wants up, there it is. And there's also going to be a show broadcasting on IWTV to raise even more money for him. Also, we should probably we, uh, we should probably bring up uh, the indie guy that that the, the promoter uh, who. Uh, Shut down a racist chant there. Well, 
Okay, um, but once I just uh, get through this, it'll be happening at Burlington, North Carolina, April 30th. It'll be aired on Independent Wrestling TV, and it will feature the ugly his tag team partners on the Ugly Ducklings, that being Rob Killjoy, Coach Mikey, and Colby Carino. And uh, I'm sure there'll be a ton of other indie stars there as well, maybe even somebody higher up, because I know that uh, Lance Lude has made a lot of friends in the wrestling business, and I would not be surprised at all to see Brian Pillman Jr. there if he can get permission from Tony Khan. And for this one, I'm pretty sure he will. Yeah, link in the Twitch chat, and I'll put one in the Discord chat as well. Oh, I see it. There we go. Oh, colon cancer, too. That sucks. Yeah, and as you can see, he is a father. And I didn't want to bring up beforehand because... Um, he only I only saw him share this on his personal Facebook page, so I wasn't sure if I could bring it up. But because there's a fundraiser, there's a huge event over it. I felt comfortable bringing it up now. So if you if you can donate some money, um, I as you can see from there, I donated a few bucks to it. So just whatever you can, really. Hey, if, if I could, I would. If I could, I would. I they, but it's a case of I'm just happy to to, to provide the platform to share it to a couple of people here and there, and that's always good. Yeah. I 100% appreciate. And, you know, if you can't donate, please share the link, get the word out, uh, because I've been a fan of this guy since 2008. So, it like, so this guy's been a huge part of my wrestling fandom. So any help would be great. And, Maddie, I know that you know what it's like to uh, lose a wrestler to cancer, or that you've mm-hmm. seen that. It's never a good thing. Uh, so hopefully uh, everything will go well. So, Maddie, as you were saying, the, rest, the promoter that shut down the races chant... Yeah, uh, I believe Danny Cage was the name. Uh, possibly. I mean, uh, I only, for, I, I, so which promotion was this? Oh, uh, hold on. I thought I, yeah, I would have thought you would have seen that. That was all over the place for a couple of days. Unfortunately, no. There was a lot happening this week. Unfortunately, true. But you, I would have thought you would have written it down by now. Well, I did. This is one of those. I apologize, folks, but uh, I wanted to bring it up. Professionalism, you're swimming in it. Yeah, but you're the one who does the list usually. Things that escape my list. I'm not Chris Jericho over here. We need a Lewis Black kind of guy. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> Ah, uh, there we go. Yep. Wrestling promoter shuts down Dude, show after you, if, if fan uses official language. Yeah, Danny Cage, owner of promoter of the Monster Factory Wrestling School in New Jersey. They were doing a prom. Oh, yeah, they were doing. A... Go ahead. Sorry. I've heard of that place. Yeah. So yeah, Danny Cage. He he. They're doing a pro They're doing a show uh, over the weekend, and someone's uh, screaming out, "Go back to Africa!" Match ends. He comes out, picks up the microphone. All right, I heard what what the fuck. Um, obviously, I'm uh, you know I'm I'm paraphrasing here, but he says, "Look, I heard what you fuckers were doing, on, and uh, we hear that again. I'm stopping the show again." And uh, and he says, "Here's my number. You find the fucker. You text it to me. We'll take care of him." Cue Tommaso Champa's theme. No one will survive. No. Uh, quote, I don't mind you guys yelling at the wrestlers. Uh, so he's, this is what he said. Quote, I don't mind what you guys yelling at the wrestlers and stuff like that, but I don't want to hear ever, ever again, quote, send him to Africa, unquote, or any shit like that, end quote. He's, uh, Cage told the crowd. I don't know who said it. Said it I don't want to put it this way. Whoever said it and has an issue with with me saying this, I don't want. Uh, don't know who said it. I heard it. You can text me at, at, at insert phone number here. We could sort that shit out. But if it ain't, it ain't happening here, that's it. Enjoying the show. And he later tweeted the video of of the the incident, so to speak. He's just lucky that Eddie Kingston wasn't there because last time Eddie Kingston was set free to an event, like where something. Uh, where a crowd member got a bit too much of themselves trying to get over, mm-hmm. he almost murdered them. Oh, the oh I remember that. Oh, God. Back in 2005, CZW had a 10 bell salute to Eddie Guerrero after he died, and one person decided to heckle Eddie Guerrero during that moment. That Eddie man Kingston, was, a, was a drunk fucking idiot. Eddie Kingston had to be held back by the entire locker room while security escorted that guy out of the building. 
saving that guy's life, by the way, because I have no doubt that E. Kingston would have murdered him. And they had ever, enough evidence to say, well, that was a hate crime. The racism thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, Just uh, to file homicide, he spends a couple months in jail and a slap on the wrist. So just be lucky that the promoter handled, that guy very lucky, the promoter did, that was the one that handled this, and not one of the boys, especially mm-hmm. one who may have had a bit of a temper. So very, a very bit lucky. Of, a little bit of a temper. <laughs> is that all the news that you have this week all right that's it yeah we're gonna take a break because we are over time but then again we have to kill a lot of time that being said let's let, let hit the hit the thing we're gonna be right back ladies and gentlemen uh with uh, a brief view at wwe's fucking up a pay-per-view i mean launching a paper i mean doing a pay-per-view on peacock oh they're gonna fuck it up on the damn thing you know it but we will discuss it in a few do not go away And now a word from our sponsors. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Southpaw! Read your wrestling. Hey, watch out now because we got t-shirts coming for you. Everybody in the small towns we're coming to. Watch out! Southpaw! Read your wrestling t-shirts. Ten dollars. All right, y'all. Oh, watch out. It's called karate. And you know what I'm saying right now? If you want to learn it, buy a shirt and the king will teach you. You know what I'm saying? Dial Klondike 53226 for your Southpaw Regional Wrestling t-shirt. Warning, may cause ringworm. This is WMOB Mobile. 12 on your channel dial and 12 in the TV ratings. I couldn't play fast lane. All right. Last time I played Life in the Fast Lane, we got yanked off YouTube. Even just, you can, eat bit, even just eat bit, eat bit Fast Lane, we got we got flagged for the actual song. Explain that shit. Bought it. I, I, anyway, Russell Cast, RBT Entertainment Production, Podomatic, Spotify, YouTube, Podcasts and Places Live on Twitch, Maddie and T Dub. Just the two of us this evening. Shintar Girl, uh, he bowed out. Uh, due to computer computer situations, he will be back next week. We believe. All right. That being said, I still believe. <laughs> All right. Let's get to the thing. So we get to, get to the stuff that you folks are here for, because we ain't here for the WWE anymore. I mean, barely. I mean, we're gonna watch WrestleMania. I think. Uh, probably. You know, I mean, it's WrestleMania. Believe- I mean, it is it's a moral cool, obligation. Uh, you know, it's it's at the very least, WrestleMania is usually an interesting show. It usually gives us, if nothing else, plenty to talk about. It's rarely a boring show. No, that is for so, sure. And even it's if it's boring be, for WrestleMania, that's like good for pay per view standards. So, if, if nothing else, you know, it's it's either going to be really really good or really really bad. Either way, it gives us something to talk about. True. Very true. Uh, the pre-show has Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler taking on Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair in the pre-show for the Women's Tag Team Championship. Yeah. I really hope that's not a pre-show thing because I just refreshed the page and it's not listed as such. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yeah, it, ha- it has been corrected, but uh, it has been corrected, but... <sighs> anyway, that match I'm looking forward to because 
I believe that Banks and Bel Air could be built better than this. Having to this should this fall. they should be they should be you know fighting each other out by this time in the build. Instead, you know, they're still doing that oddball tag team theme, trying to get them, you know, going up against Jackson Baszler with Reginald. Don't forget about Reginald. Oh, God. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, they are fucking up this easy money matchup with a sommelier who was only supposed to be there for a couple weeks, but he was so funny and wacky and got... Then Vince's fucking funny bone, and he's got a fucking WWE contract now. Explain that shit. If you can make Vince laugh, you'll have a contract for life. See our crew. Uh, very true. That is very true. Uh, the pay-per-views are this is there's no particular order other than the main event being Roman versus Daniel Bryan for the WWE title, uh, with Edge being the special guest enforcer. That's what happened on SmackDown, by the way, JC. We did. We do appreciate it. Just cool it down, obviously. Uh, this first match at the bottom of the card, I'm like, what? this is not WrestleMania. Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon slime shit, and this is this is this Braun Strowman versus Jane McMahon. That's not that's on the main. That's not on the Mania card. Like I get it, it's Jane McMahon, but still. Everything I read and see about this build makes me sad because a few years ago, Braun Strowman could have been one of the top guys, but now he's got Nickelodeon slime all over his face. Not so much, yeah. And yeah, I did, you you heard me right. I saw the fucking clip on YouTube. Same week we had Match of the Year candidate Britt Baker DMD versus Thunder Rosa. Lights out. Both women bleeding buckets. And another bucket gets dropped on Braun Goddamn Strowman. A monster among men, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, it's official. WWE is in it for the content, not the quality. They're here to push as they are they are literally they have become soap opera. That's what they've become. We've always said wrestling is a is a male soap opera, but Shit, they're taking that shit seriously now. Uh, this is just this is depressing. Very depressing. Yeah. Unlike the next match, which looks like it could be. Oh know, my it's... god, yeah. Shinsuke Nakamura versus Seth Rollins. If that doesn't get match of the night, I'll be sad in my head, please. Give them 15 minutes and let them just do Fuck the that. Match. Give them 25 and tell them go nuts. Wake up, Shinsuke Nakamura. He, he's got a couple of ba- a couple of, of big match of the year candidates left in him. Let give them time. Let them do match. Just let them do the wrestling. Just wrestle. Let them wrestle. That's wrestle. All you do. Wrestle. Thank you, uh, Matty Spoonie. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's been a while since we 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 used that one, but yeah. yeah but sometimes right. you know you. It WWE makes me think like just let them go out there and do the wrestles without any nonsensical booking stuffs. Just Rollins, Nakamura, give them twenty minutes. Let them do the. It's a mid card match. So twenty five. You know, you know, entrances are five minutes. Give them twenty five. Go nuts. Here's the finish. At like when you get go home, do the finish. Otherwise, go nuts. Do not overproduce this shit. Unlike the next match. Um, I don't. I I have barely followed WWE, and this is one of those. What the fuck am I looking at? But this is an intergender match: Alexa Bliss versus Randy Orton. This is this is screaming cinematic. This is screaming. The Fiend will return here. Yeah, this is screaming. Someone's gonna get RKO'd. I don't think it would be Alexa Bliss. What's gonna happen is Alexa Bliss and Randy Orton are about to square up. Let's go out. Let's go back on. There's. I'm assuming a new version of The Fiend, and he's going to attack Randy Orton, and this will lead to their WrestleMania match. Which only makes sense. But this definitely screams cinematic. Uh, next up, Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus. No holds barred, and they could have made a bigger deal, making it even more, but uh, on the go-home show of the Raw, they announce 
Bobby Lashley versus Drew McIntyre WWE Championship before the pay-per-view. Junior, dumbass. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Dumbass. Vince McMahon, dumbass. Yeah, that's the kind of thing you're supposed to do after the pay view, so that way you can Like, this is an easy that. booking. This is easy booking, and they're fucking up easy booking here. Like, no holds people... barred. Winner faces Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania. You don't have to do jack shit. Just literally, these guys... Fuck. Yeah, like... I'm getting frustrated one... at this fucking company, and I barely watch their shit now. Yeah, like, this is why we don't... <laughs> so we, like, don't we, like... we... This is this is why we stopped watching the Fed. Like we because just this, read and watch YouTube clips now, and I'm pissed off just reading and talking about this shit. Yeah, just seriously, like, they they take the most easy. Just here's the ball, put it on. All the because team. Vince wants predi- unpredictability. We can't let the marks find out what the fuck we're thinking. It's just because it's predictable doesn't make it bad. We're human yeah, beings. I mean, some some of us get the patterns. Yeah, yeah, and you know, like this is the most easily put the ball on the tee and then hit the home run. Just the natural build is. Shame They're is fucking up a tee ball at this point. Yeah, they are. They literally are. I mean, they literally like you said it yourself. Ball on tee, swing bat, home run. You are literally Barry Bonds on ten thousand steroids. 500 <laughs> yards and you're and you're hitting the tee and the and the umpire is going strike three you're out am it's i bizarre. wrong here uh, people yeah. still like this shit like it, it i feel like most people just watch out of habit because it's just built into them and to, i get it, oh, it, 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 it i get it just, it's the hardest thing i've ever done breaking up but i was so goddamn burnt out last year that i'm like I'll watch WrestleMania. I'll watch the Mania, after, uh, the Raw after Mania. Then I am done. Yeah, I mean, from 2001 up until like 2016, I watched most episodes of Raw. But after all, I just like I just couldn't anymore. I just really could not. After a while, just it just becomes so difficult to watch because you just get so drained of energy from the monotonous booking and the fact that there are so many DQ finishes, so many count-off finishes, so much bullshit finishes. Which, at, at, at that point, you know, the DQ stuff, it, it, it makes sense because they're on TV and they're trying to build up to the pay-per-view, but now, they're so focused on sell the network that they they, they got your... Fu- if, you, if you have Peacock, they have your money. In fact, they got NBC Universal's money. And they don't they care don't about, have to worry they, about they they got they got the one of the biggest marks out there. Yeah, at this all they point, have to do is they, produce two hours of show, and they don't care if it's good or bad. The worst part is, the money they get from the networks, so far outweighs anything anything they're getting from any of the fans. It so far outweighs it that it doesn't even matter. We are what. we are expendable. Yeah, at as that long point. As get a, some sort of baseline to make the networks happy that's all they need and people and people and people call us marks and, and judases and and anti wwf people and all all the words you want to throw at us for just wanting to watch good wrestling on wednesday now like i barely watch nxt hell i'm pretty sure i'm not going to watch nxt takeover part 1 on wednesday What does that tell you? Yeah, just uh, like all they have to do sometimes is just like and look the at, next look match. Look at this fucking is, card. Look at this it. next match though. All this, this match. fucking talent. Big E versus Apollo Crews Intercontinental Championship. We should be ha- we should be hyped for this match. I am. I'm hyped for this, especially well, because yeah, Apollo that, that, that should makes one win. of us at least. Apollo should win. This is his big crowning moment right here. Give him the belt. That's really? all the belt has been telling me. This is his time. It's Apollo time, baby. Give Apollo the belt. Give Apollo the belt. Give Apollo the belt. I'm sorry, it's it's infectious. But uh, no. there's a part of me that wants to believe this, but the, this is WWE. They're going to let Big E retain because Apollo's the heel. It's Apollo's time, baby. 
he cut the big promo. He got the big character change. If he loses here, then uh, it'll make the character change just a little bit pointless, really. What do you think especially they're going to do, T-Dub? The Seriously. Especially it's the three, the three week push heel edition. You know it. Uh, uh, you know it. You know I'm right. Ah! And Biggie's the bigger star. And who do you think Vince? It, it, and again, going back to make 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 Junior laugh, half contract for life. What do you think Biggie's been doing for about a decade? He's definitely been really comedic. Although his last promo last week, that last week's promo. Mwah. Oh, Brilliant. that promo when he go when he says go going biblical, yeah. dude. Keep belt on on Big E and have him cut yeah. these promos. Yeah, or I even better, do what T Dub says: put belt on Apollo and start the push to Big E to get in the world title 100%. with them promos. I think that you know Big E loses here, and then you slowly start to build to him taking the title off of Roman, possibly. At the pay view after WrestleMania, or uh, even if you want to slow build to SummerSlam, even though I don't really trust slow build at WWE these days. So I would say just whatever I pay view comes after WrestleMania, so that way minimal chance of screw up. <laughs> it's been a while since we've watched the product, hasn't it? A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, because we believe they're not going to fuck it up. Short <laughs> <laughs> builds. They might be able to get this. Short term builds, they might be able to get this. Long term, maybe not so much. Devin the Great in the chat raw. You mean nineteen ninety nine to early two thousands WCW Nitro? Well just Nitro just WCW in general, let's be fair. Yeah, this is uh Yeah, I've I've, I've been seeing a bit too many comparisons to Nitro and it's hard not to notice them because number one, three hours, just like Nitro was during its dying days. Mm. Number two Really, really bad creative decisions, just like Nitro was. And number three, a creator, creative runner who just doesn't get it anymore. And he's hiring people, so they did, so they don't tell him that he's fucking up. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's got yes. Bruce Pritchard, John uh, John Laurinaitis. He's yanked Triple H off his uh, off the main stuff, and he's just working on NXT again. Folks, Triple H wasn't. Sent that he's gone I senile. And he is refusing to, re to to acknowledge it. By the way, uh, Triple H wasn't at tapings this week because of the whole COVID thing, and he's just trying to play safe, apparently. You know what? <laughs> I I'm not. This is none of my business, but I'm pretty sure Vince hasn't had his vaccinations yet. Or it I wouldn't surprise he... me. Vaccinations? I don't need those. I can just punch coronavirus right in the face. And then the main event, Roman Reigns, Daniel Bryan, WWE Championship, Edge is the guest enforcer. I'm guessing that there's going to be some sort of screwy finish here where it'll turn the WrestleMania main event of Edge versus Roman Reigns into a good old-fashioned triple threat. Because they don't trust Edge to have a match, which is fucking weird. I'm not sure if that's the reason or because I, they I, want to have a triple threat They'd match. be fucking up the one good match they have here because Roman Reigns versus... Edge one on one is a money match. They don't need to overcomplicate things. They don't, but this is WWE, and I could think of worse things than adding Daniel Bryan. You know what? Fair point. <laughs> Daniel Bryan point. in a main event match situation? Sure. You know that in some weird bullshit way, they could find some sort of convoluted nonsense way to add Great Collie to it, and you know it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if, if Great Kali was was mobile enough to move in the ring again, Vince would probably find a way to bullshit his way to a four four away with that thing. Yeah, he would. He fucking would. So that's our preview for Fast Lane. Uh, hopefully, it's better in execution than it is on paper. There's my dot button. No, 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 no. Ah ha. Yep. Just helping. I'm hoping. Winners and losers. Let's do it. Losers week. Obviously, loser goes to the cult of Cornette because obvious reasons. You know, they just can't let good enough be alone. They just always have to put their venomous hatred into the world of wrestling. 
can't believe I was a fan of that fucker. Can't believe it. Yep. Hey, it's not you know he he was a very charismatic person, and he made some good points back in Ye Day, but eventually he let his hatred get the best of him, and now he gets his views from just hating on everything. If just he if he just stopped and just said I hate Vince Russo, we'd still like him today. But he just wouldn't stop. He's letting he's Vince solid. Russo win over his own bullshit, folks. Yep. Oh, Kenny, no! Kenny, no! Wait, wait, what? According to JC, according to JC Kenny Omega is getting involved in NFTs. No! Kenny, what? Wait. Yeah, Kenny's NFTs. getting involved with NFTs. Non refungible uh, transactions, I believe it is, or tokens, non refungible tokens. What? Yeah, it's it's sad. What the fuck is an NFT? Non refungible token. It's it's cryptocurrency. Okay, what? Yeah, that makes me sad. NFT non fungible. So he's getting into Bitcoin. Uh, I'm not sure if that specifically, but some sort of cryptocurrency. It's his own fucking life. Let him live it, folks. Jesus Christ. It's, if it's, he wants no, to blow his money on bullshit, bad. let him blow his money on bullshit. What the fuck do I have to care about that? He's it's a wrestler. I want to talk about him and about professional wrestling. What in the fuck did I just said about that half an hour ago? Makes me sad. Kenny, you could have had it all. Dude, what he does outside the ring, I don't give a fuck. Kenny. T-Dub. Kenny. Kenny. NFTs are super bad. Oh, what the fuck is an NFT then? That's so goddamn bad. What the fuck? All right, let me just go to the Wikipedia article so I can read it verbatim. Please, because I... There's a part of me that, why are you making a big deal of something I shouldn't be, I don't give a shit about? You know? One fungible token is a unit of data on a digital ledger called a blockchain where each NFT can represent a unique digital item, and thus they are not interchangeable. NFTs can represent digital files such as art, audio, video, and other forms of creative work. While the digital files themselves are infinitely reproducible, the NFTs representing them are tracked on their undying blockable in undying blockchains and provide buyers with proof of ownership. The common blockchains such as Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, Flow, etc. each have their own token standards to define their use of NFTs. Wait, that's bad for the environment? Like, I'm not getting the connection to that, JC. Carbon emission. NFT purchases and sales have become amish in growing controversy regarding the high energy use associated with blockchain transactions. In recent years, there have been a number of web articles and academic reports saying high electricity usage associated with the proof-of-work validation process used on the Bitcoin and Ethereum networks. All right, and this will be the last time we're bringing that shit up. Same for you, same for you in the chat. I don't give a fuck about the outside shit! Whatever he wants, outside of AEW games, whatever the fuck Kenny Omega wants to do in, in, in his personal life, I don't care. Because I was easily confused by what the fuck that was, and you're making him a big deal. Okay, is it bad for the environment? Fair. Fuck him. Whatever. But I don't give a shit. This is a wrestling podcast, not a Bitcoin podcast, not an environmental podcast. I don't give a shit about the size of shrimp. Okay, that's a little inside baseball. I'm sorry, but still. Keep it on track, people. I don't give a fuck about cryptocurrency. If I did, I'd be a rich motherfucker. Now, self-deprecating, I, I know it. I'm like, okay, fair enough. Moving on. Uh, for me, WWE, for all of the obvious reasons. Which ones? Pick one at this point. Uh, James E. Cornette, and I'm pretty sure uh, that if Shin Tiger Girl was here... He'd be a D cell battery award winner for sure. Fucking you chasing off Maki off Twitter, the shame of you fuckers. 
not the audience, but uh, the, 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 the cult cornet, obviously. And one C. Hogan. He's co-hosting oh, no. WrestleMania oh, with Titus O'Neil. Yes, brother, I'm going to host it with him because we're all brothers, brother, 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 direct dude, brothers, brother, brother. If you know what the C stands for, don't repeat it in the chat. You're you're got to get blocked, I'm sure. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, a, that's a little bit of tone death there, yeah. Just a little bit. Just a tad. Just a tad. Winners, T Dub, winners. Winner goes to Britt Baker and Thunderosa for their lights out match this week. Match of the year candidate. Absolutely. I will not be disproven in this point. Uh was there anybody else or is those are the only two? Yeah, and of course Kylie Ray for returning. Huzzah! Why not? Why not? Let's throw that one in. Um uh, I'm surprised we haven't talked about uh, Dyn uh, El El uh, Dark Elevation in, in the first uh, segment because one of my winners, Paul White, his uh, commentary debut. Hey, he's new at, it, at this. Even he'll admit it. But first, first go, um, thumbs up. Uh, I thought he was all right. I, you know, he was like I said. It, like he's not the best. He was all right, but considering he's this is his first time doing it. He was all right. That's a thumbs up. Uh, Impact Wrestling. Uh, I'm forgetting what the fuck I wrote that down for, yeah. but Impact for Wrestling. Fred Bell versus Sammy Callahan? I don't think that was it. Anyway, uh, Thunder Rosa and Dr. Britt Baker for the reasons you brought up. And this is more than obvious. Rebel for that ta uh, for that uh, table bump as well. Uh, Eric Bischoff, Hall of Fame, Danny Cage, for the reasons brought up uh, earlier as well. And of course, Pinnacle, MJF, that and that crew, looking pretty, pretty, pretty good. Also got to give a shout to AEW music producer Mikey Ruckus for this tweet. AEW themes, the Upside Down album coming later this year. What is the Upside Down? Example number one, a jazz rendition of Kenny Omega's Battle Cry. Genre Ooh. folks, of your favorite AEW themes coming soon. Nice. Very nice. All right. That being said, uh, we got to do some plugs. So, T-Dub, go right ahead. I know you got a new video, and I, I've seen it. It's, it's, a worth, it's a worthwhile watch, folks. Thank you. Yes. My latest video is all about... Was WWE wrong for their booking of the main event of WrestleMania 31? Find out in the video. For those uh, who need a reminder, it's the one with the main event of Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar and a, a particular heist of the century. I'll give a link to it in the Twitch chat in just a moment. There you go. Uh, Max Gorn, uh, of course, our buddy Shintai Girl, he's on YouTube uh, doing his thing as per usual. Uh, once he's, he's back up, of course. Uh, you could uh, you could check it out this stuff out on uh, youtube.com slash Lee slash maxicorn and all that good stuff of course uh, you can follow us on Twitter at manaj 316 at TWK official at chin tire curl TWKs uh, if you want to see TWK's new new video which will more than likely be retro ma retro mania wrestling knocking on wood for that you could watch it literally patreon.com slash TWK reviews only a buck you get it early um, of course his book uh, Shin's book New World or New Worlds. It's on Amazon. It's got good reviews. You should read it. We have. We find it good. And of course, my tip jar, tip, uh, my tip jar, paypal.me slash manaj316 and all of that good stuff. That being said, that's the show, folks. We appreciate your, uh, your sitting around with us for a little bit over an hour and a half. It's much appreciated as per usual. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Shintai Curl and of course, my good buddy TWK. Oh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to say goodbye. You you do not do good at the uh, Shintaro Curls gimmick. No, no, I do not. However, you should all work yours. See you guys <laughs> later. 
Segways, he's got them. My name's Matt H. I remind you to help professional wrestling support your independent promotion as soon as possible. We shall see you next week. Oh, my God, I was so frustrated this last segment. I'm so sorry, but we will do better next time. Bye, everybody. You're not, you're not going to do it? And he asked me how I feel. Good. You were, you were, we're, we're like this. We're like this. We're ready there. Tag team. How do you feel? Not good, Eddie. Mm. Not in a good mood. Okay? Not just because I got burned and lacerated, all that notwithstanding. Then I got handcuffed and beaten to a bloody pulp. You know, I'm not, not, not feeling too good. I should be on a beach in a hot tub right now sipping a Mai Tai. But instead, I'm going to war again because it's time to take care of my real problem. You know, you sometimes know. you got to step back, take a look, and fix the real problem. We know what that problem is, don't we? Those good brothers. Yeah, brother. Everybody loves the good brothers. E hey, Hoot. Oh, there's such a good time. Everybody loves the good brothers, baby. No. I don't. At all. I don't like them at all. And not just because I wasted my money on talking shop a mania. Gonna need a sensu for that one. Yeah.